Hi, I'm Andrew Connell. In this video, I'm going to explain how apps work with Partner Center and Partner Center development. And I'm also going to show you how to create and onboard apps with Partner Center. I'm logged into my Partner Center dashboard for my Integration Sandbox account. What I'm going to do is go to the dashboard, and then I'm going to go to my account settings. And I'm going to click on API over here on the left. Now, what this is going to show me is an existing um, Partner Center application that I had, that it's been previously created for me for my um, for my tenant. Um, just to start off from scratch, I'm going to go ahead and unregister this. I'm going to show you what the full experience looks like. So I'm going to click on unregister to pull this out. Now, what I want to do is I want to go create a new Partner Center application. So I'm going to say create a new app with default settings. Now at the time of this recording, which is mid-May 2016, the Partner Center administrative site, the Partner Center dashboard, only supports creating a web application at this time. And that web application is going to be, can be used for doing app-only permissions. So I'm going to click on register an app, and that's going to create the application for me. What this is doing is it's gone in with, into my Azure Active Directory, created a new app, the app is named Partner Center API 1. So let's just grab this. I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to keep track of a few things over here in this little notepad. So we're going to call the app name is a Partner Center API 1. Another thing that we need from this is the actual app ID. So this app ID, I'm going to copy this out and paste this over here in my little notepad. You see it starts with 595. So we see it was called client ID. I'm also going to, it's or it's called the app ID. I'm also going to list this client ID because client ID is how we look at these things inside of Azure AD. And that's how it's referred to in a lot of places. Now I need the client secret. And that's a key. If we scroll down, we see that we have a key here. Now this key is only valid, is only going to be shown one time. Once I go, I leave this page and come back, it's going to be starred out. So I would have to go create a new key if I don't take, keep a copy of this. So we'll come over here and I'll paste this in as my key as well. Now the other thing that we need to keep track of is we need to keep track of what our Azure AD tenant uh, is. What's the name of our account? What's the ID? This goes by a lot of names. In Azure, we call it the tenant ID, but we also see in Partner Center, it's referred to as a Microsoft ID or an account ID. If I come back over here, we see we have account ID. We even see commerce ID. That's the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and copy this out and I'm going to paste it over here in my tenant. So we saw it was those different things as well as the commerce ID. And then I'm also going to grab my domain. What's the domain for my tenant? That's CSP57S. So I grab that from this value here and I'll just paste it in. Okay, so right now I'm in pretty good shape. I have a web application that's been created and onboarded with Partner Center. It's been given admin permissions. It's been given uh, admin consent to act on uh, as an administrator on uh, independent of a user so the app can just uh, log in on its own and do things with in the, in the commerce API, the Partner Center API. Um, and it's also been given access to the Partner Center dashboard or the Partner Center API. Now, that's great for a web application and for apps that need to have uh, app-based permissions. But what about apps that need user permissions and that want to have more interactive logins like a console application? For that, we need to do a native app. But the trick is, is that Partner Center doesn't support uh, creating native applications. So what I need to do is I need to go create a native app and then onboard it with Partner Center. Let's see how we do this. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to log out of my uh, Partner Center dashboard. And I'm going to come over to my Azure Management Portal. I'm going to log in with an existing Azure subscription that has access to my directory. So let me go ahead and log in. Oh, that code wasn't right. Let's try the new code that just switched over. So here I've gone to my Integration Sandbox account, and we can see a list of all the users that have access to this account. I'm going to jump over to the list of applications. Now remember the application that we had just created a second ago. You don't see it listed here, and the reason why, the reason why it's not listed here is because we want to look at applications my company owns. So I'm going to switch the filter over hit this check mark, and we should see the application we just created a minute ago using Partner Center. Now I can, I can be sure that that's this one right here that I've selected by selecting this application. And let's take a look at his ID. Notice his client ID starts with 5957. Well remember, if I jump over here to my notepad, 
we can see that's the same ID of the application we had just created. Okay, so we're in good shape. Another thing too is I can see the tenant ID. See where it starts with B6B9? If I look up here in the URL, we'll see that I'm looking at my directory B69B. I can also see that if I go look, click down here at the bottom and view endpoints for my tenant, and I can see all the different uh, uh, IDs there um, showing up for my directory. Okay, what I want to do, uh, and look, actually, let's look at one more thing. If I scroll down, notice here that the application has also been given access to Partner Center. All right, that's good. Let's switch back over, and I'm going to come over here to uh, create a new uh, native application. So I'm going to come to the list of all my applications for my tenant and click on Add. And I'm going to say I want to add an application my organization is developing and give it a name. We'll call this My Native App Demo 01. And I'm going to choose a native client application. It's going to ask me what the redirect URL is. Well, it's going to be a console app, so this really isn't going to matter. And I'll check that off. It's going to go about creating my application. Okay, so our application has now been created. There's my native app demo right there. So I'm going to go ahead and let's copy this name out and let's paste it over here into the name of our application. So now we have a note of it. Now another thing we need is we need to get the ID of this guy. So I'm going to come over here, go to configure, and I'm going to grab the ID. And let's come back over to my notepad and I'll paste it in. So it starts with 6BD1. Now, if I go back to my application and I scroll down, what we'll see here is that I don't have the Partner Center uh, permission uh, associated with this. This application has also not been granted admin access. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to log out. Let's log out of Azure. I'm going to come back over to my Partner Center. I'm going to go over to the Account Settings and then to the API, and this is gonna show the application that I onboarded with Partner Center just a minute ago, right? and that's fine. But the trick is, is that I wanna use this interface to onboard the native application. So what I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna unregister this web application we had created previously. It's not gonna delete it, it's just gonna break the association from Partner Center for now. It still has admin access to our tenant, and it still has um, been uh, that permission to uh, access uh, the application, the, the Partner Center API as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the application I just created, my native app demo one, and I'm going to say register the app. What this is going to do is give this app permission. Notice the IDs. There's the app ID 6BD1. We saw that just a minute ago. Our app has now been registered with Partner Center. That means it has admin access or has been granted admin consent to our Azure AD directory for Partner Center, and it's also been granted the um, access to the Partner Center API. Now, just to prove this, what I'm gonna do is, first let me unregister this, because what I want is I, I wanna leave my web app as the one uh, that's set up. Actually, we'll just leave this one registered. Why don't we just go ahead and click, leave that one and said register this app. Let's log out, and let's jump back over to Azure one more time. I'm gonna let this go ahead and load, and then select the directory uh, the Azure AD tenant for my Partner Center Integration Sandbox account. I just have to give it a second to load. All right, now that I'm in my directory, let's come over to the applications and let's find the uh, native app that we just created a minute ago. Here it is right here, My Native App Demo 01. If I select this one, we can see it's the same app, B6, uh, B, sorry, 6BD1. But what you want to see that's a little bit different, if I scroll down, notice now it has the permission to access Partner Center. This is great because now if you look at my little notepad here, I now filled in all the details. I have information about my Azure AD tenant, the, the tenant ID and the domain. I have information about a web application that has app only uh, permissions been granted to it. And I have native app uh, permissions as well, or native app created that also has been granted access to my tenant. Using this information, I can then go create a new application or use the uh, update the uh, configuration for the console application that Microsoft's Partner Center uh, samples provide. I'll show that in another video.